Okay, and today we're going to continue on with the bones and features of the appendicular skeleton. In the last video, went over the upper limb, and for this video, we're going to go over the lower limb, again using this complete anatomy app. So the lower limb components consist of the right and left pelvis bones, the femur, and the tibia. So for those three, you're going to have to identify right and left. And then there's the fibula and the bones of the foot. So we're going to start with the hip bone, or coxal bone, or os coxa. The hip bone is made up of three separate bones that fuse together, uh, but I just refer to them as regions, usually, your ilium, pubis, and your ischium, right? So your ilium attaches to the axial skeleton a little more solidly than the you know, your clavicle and your shoulder girdle, but it is attaches over here to the sacrum, over right over here, right on both sides. And then there's two separate hip bones. You got a right and left hip bone that join together in the front with that pubic symphysis right there, right? That fibrocartilage pad, right? So they join at the sacrum on the posterior side, and then they join together in that pubic symphysis to make the hips, right? But each individual hip bone, you can call them a hip bone, uh, the other names you'll see to them uh, refer to are coxal bones or os coxa. All right, so you got this joint surface right here where it articulated with the sacrum, that's the auricular surface over there. Uh, and again, this must mean we're looking at the medial side, but also the more major sort of feature is on the lateral side, the acetabulum right there where you're femoral head fits into. This is kind of a weird angle, right? It curves in, but this is what I call the anterior side of it. Again, this is looking from the side, right? This is the anterior surface. This is the posterior surface. So for your hip bone itself, you know, that anterior surface is for the most part, this part of the pubic region Right over here, you know, either the tubercle or the inferior pubic rami right here, right? These rami. So that is your front of your bone. This is the lateral. So those are the most obvious things that are going to tell you whether this is the right or left bone. Okay, I'm looking right at him. He's facing at me. Here's his leg, right? This is his groin area right here. So this must be, it's on my right. So it's gotta be his left. And let's confirm that. Hey, how about that? All right, so that, that's how you're gonna tell. Again, from the back, you can just put somebody with their butt facing toward you. All right, so medial, lateral, and then front, right, your pubic bone. And then this part region right here is your ischium. So the reason why it's good to know, you have to know them as a hip bone, but these regions are gonna be important to know, right? You got your ilium, or your iliac bone, or iliac region, pubis, or pubic bone, pubic region, and then your ischium, right? The ischium is gonna be on the posterior side, your pubic is gonna be on the anterior side. These are both inferior, and then your Iliac region is that top portion of it. So let's go over ilium first. You got these two bumps right over here. This is going to be called the anterior superior iliac spine, right? So it's on the anterior surface. It's superior to the inferior iliac spine. It's in the iliac region and it's a spine kind of. It's like a kind of a jutting out of the bone. And so that kind of gives you the description where it is and what it is right there. So you got an anterior superior, an anterior inferior iliac spine. On the back of your bone, on the back of the ilium right here, you got a posterior superior iliac spine and a posterior inferior iliac spine. So looking again over here, those are the two spines up front. 
And then the other ones are a little more pronounced when you're looking at the back, right over here on the posterior side. You also have for your ilium region, you got the ilium fossa. Not labeled on this one, but it must be on the other one. You got the iliac crest. You know, they're kind of subdividing it, but it's basically the top portion. This is something else you could kind of feel a little bit on yourself. Feel the tops of your hip bones right there. That's your iliac crest. Okay, going back and near the back of you. And you can also feel that superior anterior superior iliac spine right there. So those are your iliac regions. And so notice the iliac goes about halfway down through the acetabulum, this joint socket. Right over here, it goes about halfway down. So the rest of the ilium, the rest of the acetabulum rather. Again, this is more your iliac region. This kind of anterior portion is going to be part of your pubic bone. So that's going to be covered roughly over here. And then this is going to be that issue, right? So that acetabulum is kind of divided up is how you want to think of how they're divvied up right there. So for your, for your pubic bone right over here, the inferior pubic ramus right, is going to be a major muscle attachment point. This whole area right here, they're also, this is the, this is what you want to know right here. The, inferior pubic ramus right over here right and then on top right here pubic tubercle right anything up here there's two terms on the pubic bone basically and that's the pubic tubercle and that inferior pubic ramus because these will be major muscle attachment points right and so that's your pubic bone and then also you know when you get to joints of course this is where the pubic symphysis is this is the attachment points where they join up together so that's your pubic bone, inferior pubic ramus, anything down here, anything up here, well, you can call it the crest, but pubic tubercle would be good. And then on the back, over here, this region, see all these red marks, right? These are going to be muscle attachment points for your, your hamstrings, right? On the more posterior surface, a little bit on the anterior surface will be some of your quads over here. Right? So these are something important right here, all these ischial tuberosities over here. So definitely know where that is. And then the other sort of major feature of your ischium is your ischial spine right here. Right here. So that's pretty good big landmark. Right, this is your you know, those are the, your inferior, your posterior inferior iliac spine. In the iliac region, and here's your ischial spine and your ischium. What else was it? Oh, yeah. This over here is something that's not named for the bony parts of these the ilium magnum. It's called the sciatic notch. Right over here. This big major region right here. Why is this called the sciatic notch? Anybody ever hear of sciatica? Over here, this is your sciatic nerve, right? This is, this is where that sciatic nerve is kind of going through. So people who like sit down a lot or things like that, where this is getting pressed against, right? This is where it's going against. So this is the sciatic notch. Oh, the last part was this hole right over here, right? This is not the acetabulum. This is a clear hole. It's not a socket. So this is the acetabulum, and this is the obturator foramen. Any questions on your hip bone, iliac, right? Most of the stuff was named after the region. You got a couple things like the sciatic notch and the obturator foramen, but everything else had that, that region's name in it, right? Your superior iliac spine, your ischial spine, or ischial tuberosity, or pubic, inferior pubic ramus. Or the acetabulum also didn't have that. So I guess that's the acetabulum.
sciatic notch. Was there something else after that? No, oh, obturator form. I guess this auricular surface doesn't either. Where does it attach? Attach to the sacrum over here and then to each other on the front end gently. To each other, two hip bones. All right, next step is your femur. Right, your femur's sitting inside that acetabulum, the femur head. So we kind of spoke a little about this earlier when I talked about the femur, uh, the humerus, right? But that's your femoral head. And then you have a very pronounced neck right over there, right? And then on the back of it, on the posterior side, you have those, instead of a tubercle, they're called trochanters. It's called trochanters, right? They're not tubercles just to confuse you, but they're kind of like those tubercles, right? The greater trochanter is the superior part. Uh, the inferior one is the lesser trochanter, but they're on the posterior surface. So this is a good indicator that you're looking at the posterior side of the femur, right? The medial side is very obvious, right? You got this humoral head facing medially, right? And it's facing inward right here. And then you can see that the trochanters are on the back right so what else do we got we got the head the neck the trochanters we also got this this kind of strip right here right so over here you're going to see all see all these red and blue markings there's a lot of muscles that are going to be attached to here some of them are attached to the greater trochanters right? your gluteus medius the lesser trochanter is your psoas, your ilio psoas muscles over here. They're going to be attached here. And then down over here in this ridge below the trochanters, over here, your gluteus maximus is on the gluteal tuberosity. Over here, which extends down into this region where there is going to, this is the whole region down here is the linea aspera. The whole thing is your linea aspera, right? Leading from the gluteal tuberosity down here, there's going to be a whole bunch of muscles that insert and originate from this. So that's the proximal end, the distal end. Over here has the joint surfaces uh, on the front. Over here where it's going to connect uh, to the tibia, over here. And these are called the condylar surfaces right over here. And Remember the head is facing in, so you got two surfaces right here, a medial and a lateral, right? Just look at this right here. This will tell you which, if I ask you on a test, which, what is this feature right here? You'll say the medial condyle, right? Because you'll know it's on the same side as this. And then the lateral condyle is over here. In between the two condyles, you have what's called a intercondylar fossa. They don't label it. The intercondylar fossa. And so it's a, sort of an indent right over here, right? So you got a medial condyle, a lateral condyle, and an intercondylar fossa. So those are good to know because on the on the tibia below it, you also have a lateral condyle and a medial condyle over here. And instead of a intercondylar sulcus or fossa, you have an intercondylar eminence, sort of a bump, a raise that fits in there. This is your, what else do we have to know about the femur? Uh, your head, neck, trochanters, and on the back you had that gluteal tuberosity, your linea aspera, and then the condyles right here. So Anterior, posterior was, I use the trochanters right there, which are on the back. Some people like the, you know, this kind of surface right here with the two distinct condyles, uh, rather than the single smooth, what's called a patella surface right over here. They use that as an anterior, posterior marking. And then you got below it, sitting right on it, those two bones, actually the fibia does not articulate at all with the femur, right? It's kind of nestled on the underside of the tibia right here, right? Not articulating at all. So 
that's sitting right here. So this is your either what you call the the head, the head or the proximal part of the I mean fibula. So you don't have to know left and right on the fibula, by the way. Let me get back to it. But so your tibia right here has this bump on the front right over here that you could lay that you could see from the side. That's your tibial tuberosity. Tibial tuberosity. Right? So that's on the anterior surface. That's what you want to kind of right? that's what I use for the anterior. This doesn't have that tuberosity. So if you can make out that, you know you're looking at the uh, anterior surface right there. And then for medial lateral, when you're isolated right here, you have this. It's kind of the equivalent of those styloid processes we saw in your radial and your ulnar bone, but this is called a malleolus. A malleolus. And that's this one particular is called a medial malleolus. And so that gives you a clue that you're looking at the medial side of this bone right there. Right? So you're looking at it, you're staring at it. Here's his front. This is the medial. This is his, this must be his other one must be over here. Right? So this is on his right side, right? right? That's your inner ankle, your medial malleolus. Your outer ankle is formed by the fibula over here, right? So this is your outer ankle right here, your lateral malleolus. And really the head, just being able to articulate for your fibula, just be able to tell the head, given the proper angle from the lateral malleolus. Other than that, you don't have to know right and left on this one. That is difficult. Just kind of look at the difference. This one looks a little more like a, to me anyway, an elongated surface and looks sort of like a, you know, snake's head or something like that. All right, so that's your fibula. Lateral malleolus, medialis. Those are those two bones, right? And then, so the, the joint surface of the tibula articulates with the, one of your tarsal bones, in particular, your talus. Right over here, right? So that's the, it articulates with the talus, right? One of those big proximal tarsal bones. The other major bone, right, sticking out, making up your heel, basically, is your calcaneus. Later on, we'll see this calcanean tendon or your Achilles heel right, is going to be, or your Achilles tendon is going to be coming right off there. So it's your talus and your calcanean. And then the other bone that doesn't articulate with your tarsals, metatarsals rather, is your navicular. Over here, right? So that's on the medial side and it's not connecting with your metatarsals. So there's three bones up here, talus, calcium, and navicular. And then you got these four bones that are making the connections with your metatarsals. And so for these, they do have three similar names, this cuneiform, right over here. You got a medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiform bones. Over here, these first three more medial ones, and then this most lateral bone is called your cuboid bone. If you're looking at the lateral surface of your foot right here, this is your small toe over here. That's on the lateral side. Big toes on the medial side. From this side, you got the um, talus, calcaneus, is obvious, the navicular, and then you got the medial cuneiform right over here first metacarpal, and on the other side, you got the cuboid bone that's attached over here to your fifth metatarsal. And excuse me if I said carpal before, but tarsal. So that's it.
again, you know, we looked at this appendicular skeleton today, not only the bones, um, but the features on those bones. And you want to pay attention to all those really prominent ones that are going to be able to tell you whether the bone is right or left. Those are maybe the first things you should kind of get down to learn all those features. And then, you know, you're going to want to look for those things that are going to be muscle attachment points as well as the joint surfaces, right? So most of that stuff is at the ends of the bones, the proximal and distal ones. For the other shaft stuff, the only things you would have to know is that deltoid tuberosity and on the back here that linea aspera going down and maybe the gluteal tuberosity. Otherwise, all the important stuff is near the proximal and distal ends. All right, so for all those bones, pick some of the distinguishing features from different views that you could first use to identify the bone and then note whether those features are on the anterior or the posterior side or the medial lateral side to allow you to differentiate between right and left bones. All right, that's it for the appendicular. See you next time.